Hello, this is Erica Dore, Associate Director of the North American Thrombosis Forum. I'm here with Dr. Gregory Piazza, NATF Board Member and Education Chair. Today I will be asking Dr. Piazza questions about the recent diagnosis of tenor and conductor Placido Domingo. This past Monday, Domingo was hospitalized in Madrid with a pulmonary embolism and has been treated with blood thinners. How severe is the diagnosis of PE? Well, Erica, I think that um, PE represents a spectrum of, of disorders. Uh, it can vary from a clinically important uh, blood clot in the lungs to something that's life-threatening. Um, from what I could gather uh, in the news reports, he had a pulmonary embolism that was uh, able to be managed uh, quickly, uh, but it is a very um, important diagnosis to be made and uh, has implications for his uh, risk of having future blood clots and um, for his health long term. PE is a complication of DVT. What signs and symptoms of DVT might have been missed by Domingo? That's, that's exactly right, Erica. Um, most pulmonary emboli result from deep vein thrombosis in the lower extremities or, or pelvis. Um, Placido may have had uh, symptoms of uh, swelling or pain in his legs, uh, difficulty walking, um, that may have all been uh, herald signs of a deep vein thrombosis and an impending pulmonary embolism. What are the risk factors that could have contributed to uh, Domingo's PE? Well, the, the, one of the things in, uh, about the articles about um, his pulmonary embolism is that they don't really specify what they thought may have led uh, to this. But uh, in someone of his age, we know that uh, the risk of venous thromboembolism increases with age, um, also with uh, body mass index. Um, he could have, he needs to be screened for um, age appropriate uh, cancers, um, which could also increase his risk uh, for these types of blood clots. What type of treatment might he have received upon immediate diagnosis of PE? Uh, the mainstay of therapy for pulmonary embolism is immediate anticoagulation or blood thinning. I imagine that he was very rapidly put on a blood thinner and then will be uh, transitioned from uh, an IV blood thinner to an oral blood thinner or from an injectable blood thinner to an oral blood thinner. What therapeutic options are available for long-term treatment of DVT and prevention of future PE? So for long-term treatment of venous thromboembolism, um, blood thinners are uh, really the cornerstone of therapy. Um, if his pulmonary embolism was unprovoked, uh, meaning that when his doctors go through his history, if they can't find a trigger for the event, um, such as he hasn't had recent surgery, or he hadn't been hospitalized and put on bed rest, or he hadn't had major, major trauma, if none of those factors are present, then he really had an unprovoked venous thromboembolic event, and he would uh, really require long-term anticoagulation. Um, the options that are available for that include uh, warfarin, which has been used for decades, anticoagulants um, that have come on the market recently, such as rivaroxaban, which is an oral, um, a new oral agent, um, and the other important thing for deep vein thrombosis is the use of, use of compression stockings to prevent uh, post-thrombotic syndrome. Do you feel that the incidence of DVT and PE among celebrities such as Placido Domingo and Serena Williams has made the general public adequately aware of thrombosis and what can be done to increase awareness? Well, I think it's always an unfortunate event when anyone suffers one of these venous, and throm these venous thromboembolic events. That said, um, when it happens to a celebrity, it increases awareness in the lay public um, and even among other healthcare providers about the importance and frequency of these uh, blood clotting events. I think that um, the media can do uh, a public health service by increasing awareness of these uh, venous thromboembolic events by bringing these occurrences uh, to the public's, uh, sort of the forefront of the public's eye, and um, by asking clinicians with experience in treating uh, these two types of disorders to prepare uh, educational materials, such as we do at the North American Thrombosis Forum. Well, this has been very informative. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. My pleasure.